This is For Life, the podcast. From Sony Pictures Television and ABC. Hi, I'm your host, Isaac Wright Jr. In America, it is estimated that there are thousands of wrongful convictions each year. Thousands more are overcharged and oversentenced. In 1991, I was one of the thousands of people wrongfully convicted of a crime. I was sentenced to life in prison and unfortunately had no hope for freedom and no one to fight for me other than myself. I taught myself the law and as a paralegal, I was able to help some of my fellow inmates get reduced sentences and released from wrongful convictions while seeking my own justice. After eventually getting my own conviction overturned, I became a lawyer and I've continued to be an advocate for those in need. My story also inspired the new fictional drama series, For Life, on ABC. But there are so many others with stories like mine. Today's episode is about Richard Miles, a 19-year-old African-American man who in the early morning of May 16, 1994, was arrested by Dallas police while on his way home. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. In this episode, we'll hear how Richard's faith his family's faith, and a lucky break led to his eventual release. This is Richard's story. My mom told me, she said, Richard, I know you're innocent, and we're going to walk this with you. I never asked Richard if he did it because I didn't believe he did it. We had no money to bail him out. We had no money for lawyers or or nothing. It was many nights we just cried because we didn't know how to help our baby. During the trial, um, the prosecutors first and foremost explained to the jurors that they had no motive. They could never find a connection, so therefore no motives. The moment I stand up, the jury reform, and she begins to read the verdict. And it was probably the longest but shortest sentences that I've ever heard. We, the members of the jury, uh, find the defendant, Richard Ray Miles Jr., guilty. At that point, uh, you know, I kind of like blacked out. And I remember I sat down and my lawyer, he began to nudge me and told me I need to stand up to respect the courts. And in the back of my mind, it's like, How do you respect an entity that obviously doesn't respect you? When they came back and said he was guilty, I, I, a part of me died. All the, the evidence or the information that they had in the courtroom, none of it connected with my son. They sent me to Cofield Unit, probably the biggest unit in Texas. It housed 5,000 men. The first thing that I noticed, honestly, was the showers were right up under the TV. One of the things about this unit was you don't put shower curtains up because that's impeding the vision of the officers, there was no privacy. And the fact that you could watch TV and look at a person in the shower was so dehumanizing to me that it automatically slapped me to tell me that I was not free. When I got to Cofield Unit, I met a gentleman and he said, man, if you're really innocent, Man, I know this organization by the name of Centurion uh, Ministries, and you need to write them. Well, that just started a 10-year writing process between myself and Centurion. But in the interim, I wrote other colleges. I wrote newspaper stations, uh, TV stations, and everything. The male lady, she pushes this huge box into the cell and... I got out of my bunk and I got to the box and I read a memo of a phone call that was sent in to homicide way before I went to jury trial. That was the turning point of my case, that one document. I was released 
15 months after they took my case. And so January of 2008. After Richard was released from jail and the the judge allowed me to cut that band off of his wrist, it was like the baby that I gave birth to. And you know, they put the little ID band on the baby. And after you get home for a little while, you cut the band off. It was like my baby was given back to me. To see him come out of prison and walk the life that he's walking, it is an honor. It may sound strange, but it's an honor to be his mom. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please subscribe, rate us, and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps to raise awareness and get the word out so more people can hear these powerful stories. The stories in this podcast are real. While the television series was inspired by my life, that story, including all characters, events, incidents, portrayed scenes, and dialogue, is fictitious. And be sure to watch Sony Pictures Television and ABC's drama series, For Life, Tuesdays on ABC. I'm Isaac Wright, Jr. Thank you.